So the Calgary Police Service Vice Unit has charged three people in relation to a human trafficking and prostitution investigation. The investigation was initiated after a 37-year-old woman reported that she was physically and sexually assaulted while working in the sex trade. A man who was acting as her pimp allegedly forced her to have sex uh, with him as well as other clients between August and October of 2013. In March of 2014, Daniel Erhabar, uh, E-R-H-A-B-O-R, -E 26 years of age from Calgary, was arrested and charged with human trafficking receiving material benefits from trafficking a person, two counts of choking, three counts of sexual assault, living on the avail uh, avails of prostitution, assault causing bodily harm, and assault. Uh, Urhabor has been released on bail and his next court appearance is scheduled for Friday, June 13th, 2014. Uh, this investigation continued following the arrest of Urhabor and was uh, recently concluded with two additional people being charged. Between June and August of 2013, it's alleged that the same victim was being forced to work for two other people prior to being handed over to Urhabor. Uh, Ricardo, Ricardo Joseph, 30 years of age, from Calgary, has been charged with human trafficking, receiving material benefit from trafficking in a person, living on the avails of prostitution, assault, and aiding, abetting, or compelling a person into prostitution. Se the second person, Cynthia Kindoko, 25 years of age from Calgary, has been charged with human trafficking, receiving material benefits from tra trafficking in a person, living on the avails of prostitution, and aiding, abetting, or compelling a person into prostitution. Joseph and Kindoko have both been remanded in custody and they will appear in court on June 17, 2014. What's the relationship between the three accused? Uh, I don't uh, know that there was a specific relationship. Uh, the investigation alleged that there was a uh, transfer of our victim, in this case, between the two entities. Um, I, I don't know whether there was a, a cultural relationship there or strictly a business relationship. Are the second two partners, boyfriend, girlfriend? Uh, again, I don't know. They were acquainted, but to the extent and, and whether they were romantically involved, I don't, uh, I don't know the nature you, of that relationship. Can you comment more on the transfer? I mean, how does somebody <coughs> just get handed over to somebody else? Well, that's the nature of, of the sex trade business in this case. Um, we have an individual that was put in a situation um, where she was likely physically, um, emotionally, uh, economically constrained. Um, and without her consent or control, um, she was, for all intents and purposes, transferred from one entity to another to continue um, working for uh, the Mr. Erhabor. So when and how did the investigation begin into Erhabor? <clears throat> um, our victim in this case came forward. She was able to uh, extricate herself from that situation um, and was able to come forward um, and talk to detectives in the vice unit and bring this uh, to our attention. So based on that statement and, and her accounts, those detectives were able to corroborate um, financial tri transactions and, and other aspects um, that allowed them to lay the, invest or lay the charges in question here. How, how would they find clients? Was it online or was it through a stroll? Uh, this wasn't a stroll scenario. This was uh, a combination of both what we call in-call and out-call. Um, both of those scenarios have facets of uh, social media or the internet involved. Um, an out-call scenario is where the, uh, the sex trade worker will go and meet a client um, at their venue or location. Uh, and the in-call scenario is where they've situated, uh, the sex trade worker is situated in a hotel or a, a residence and the client attends uh, to that location to engage in the behavior. A, re a report that comes <coughs> out to the city committee tomorrow says that up to 95% of prostitution in the city is being done like in a similar manner to what you described. How difficult does it make it for you guys to track down the actual beneficiaries given that when there's not a visible stroll, you know, it's happening kind of behind closed doors online and so on? And so forth? Certainly we've seen that, that trend over the last decade where um, the, the stroll scenario is not as prevalent. Um, it has 
it's added a facet to the investigation that's that's internet based so certainly it's these types of investigations aren't necessarily done driving down the street as they used to be 10 years ago now it's we're we're patrolling the internet for all intents and purposes and we're looking for profiles we're looking for individuals that are both posting ads uh, and those sorts of things um, wherein we're able to you know make the investigations in that manner we certainly respond to specific complaints from from the community and uh, individuals um, so we'll respond to those on a complaint basis um, but we're still doing what we did 10 years ago it's just it's a keyboard as opposed to uh, uh, the driver's seat now Our victim in this case was engaged as a sex trade worker. Um, I don't, I, I believe that uh, she engaged uh, these individuals as a client at one point. Um, and from that, um, there was a business relationship established that went to a point where um, she, the sex trade worker, our victim in this case, uh, was be becoming physically um, and economically constrained by this, these groups and came forward to us as a result. Any other questions? Was there any specific reason or specific incident that led her to kind of come forward to go, this is enough? I can't say if there was a specific incident, but the investigation showed a, a level of violence um, that was being used to control this individual. Um, there was certainly an element of fear in that um, and oftentimes I can't say specifically here but oftentimes we'll see an escalation um, in physical behaviors to maintain that level of control um, as with anything um, so what what may have worked three or four months prior to control an individual um, with the passage of time and desensitization you may see an ex escalation of the level of violence and control that's required to keep that person in that situation. So um, not specifically here, but I think we could surmise that it got to a point where it was the individual realized that they needed to get out of that situation. Did you say when she came forward? Uh, it was in the fall of 2013. Uh, there was again this these are very transient bu businesses we have information that there was work uh, being done in Edmonton on an uh, in-call basis um, but in terms of a specific neighborhood within Calgary um, I can't speak to that <laughs>